Hello everyone, I am Ankur Swadri from headbullseye.com and in this video lecture, I will be talking to you about certain important terminologies and concepts related to banking sector in India. First, let us try and understand what priority sector lending is. So the government of India understands that certain sectors of the economy need more support. So that is why it has fixed certain amount of percentage that the banks have to lend to various industries like agriculture, small scale industries, small business service enterprises, microcredit loans, education loans, housing loans. So every bank in India with some exceptions has to give about 40% of its total loans within these sectors. So these sectors in combination are known as priority sectors for banking. Next is another important concept that is the base rate. So this is the minimum interest rate for reference of different banks, right? So any bank which is lending to, uh, which is giving out loans, defines the interest rates in terms of base rate. So for example, if SBI gives a loan to, let us say Reliance, then it would say the interest rate is base rate plus 1% 1 or 100 basis points, right? So this is the reference and it is a minimum rate. So there cannot be, the banks cannot give any loans which are below the base rate of the bank. So base rate system replaced the base prime lending rate system which was there up till 2010. This was replaced because banks could give out loans below BPLR in the earlier, before 2010. However, now base rate is defined as the minimum interest rate at, uh, that the bank can give loans in. So after 2010, base rate is applicable to all new loans and even old loans which now come on for renewal. The different thing is that banks are free to calculate their base rates according to the cost at which they borrow these funds. However, two conditions are applied by the Reserve Bank of India. However, this base rate is calculated. RBI has to find it to be consistent or appropriate. Right? Secondly, the calculations of base rate by different banks, it has to be made public by the bank on their website or in their offices, etc. Next are the Basel 3 norms. The Basel norms are defined by BIS, that is the Bank of International Settlement in Basel, that is a city in Switzerland. Now, a BIS has its members as the all the central banks of the world, right? So they define different norms or practices for all the banking sector, for the entire banking sector of the world so that they do not indulge in bad practices which destabilize these banks. So the goal of Basel norms is to ensure financial stability and common standards of banking regulations in the world so as to avoid instability in the banking sector. So Basel Three are the latest set of norms after Basel 1 and Basel 2. They were released in 2010 but will be implemented or adopted by all the banks in the world by 2019. Next is a ratio that is capital adequacy ratio which is also known as capital to risk weighted asset ratio that is CRAR. So we will not get into the details of what these individual terms are but it expresses the bank's capital as a percentage of its risk weighted credit exposures, right? So basically the amount of money that the bank has, that is its capital divided by its risk weighted assets gives the uh, CRAR or capital adequacy ratio. It measures the amount of risk expo risky exposure that the bank has. Next we try and understand a very important concept that is the core banking solutions. So CBS uses computer and network technology to allow a bank to centralize its record keeping and allow access from any location. Now this is very important because all the transactions made within a bank are centralized and you can access 
the services of a bank for example taking out money from any place in in the country or across the world as well right so customers are allowed uh, to access their bank accounts and perform basic transactions from any branch office in the country or in fact around the world it includes transactions loans mortgage payments etc further banks make these services available across multiple channels like atms internet banking mobile banking and branches etc so this was a significant advancement over earlier traditional type of banking when all the banking transactions had to be done manually and the checks for example had to be transferred physically from one place to the other so using mobile and internet technology banks can perform all these functions in a centralized manner next is the banking ombudsman scheme of 2006 so it created a body that is the banking ombudsman to enable resolution of complaints with respect to banking services so if you are not satisfied as a customer customer of a bank of the kind of services that you are getting from the bank then you can go ahead and uh, complain it to the banking ombudsman of india next is an organization is banking codes and standards board of india so it is an independent banking industry watchdog that is it regulates or monitors whether certain standards in banking are being met or not it ensures adherence to banking codes and standards so there are various codes and standards established by the government of india the reserve bank of india etc this particular body that is bcsbi ensures that all banks are adhering to them it is not a department of reserve bank of india and also it does not have any judicial powers that is if the bcsbi finds out that there are certain mistakes or a bank is violating certain codes and standards the body itself cannot punish the bank it will recommend uh, a penalty to the reserve bank of india which has the power to penalize the banks next is a very commonly used term in banking that is neft or national electronic fund transfer so it is a nationwide system that facilitates firms individuals and corporates to electronically transfer funds from any bank branch to any individual firm or corporate having an account with any other bank branch in the country right so it is using the electronic platform to transfer funds from one place to the other so for neft 2 lakhs is the upper limit which can be transferred within 24 hours or one day for greater amounts we have what is called real time gross settlement system or simply rtgs so it is a continuous settlement system of funds where transfer of money or securities takes place from one bank to another on a real time and a gross basis once processed the payments under rtgs are final and irrevocable next term is the direct benefit transfer scheme or direct cash transfer scheme of the government of india so this is an anti poverty program launched by the government of india on 1st january of 2013 so it aims to transfer subsidies directly to the people living below poverty line so under this scheme the subsidies are not transferred to the sellers for example earlier we had ration shops ration shops earlier subsidies were transferred to the to these fair price shops or ration shops now what is happening is we remove the need of such shops and we transfer the subsidy directly to the bank accounts of individuals so that they can buy food etc from any other shop of their choice the next concept that we try to understand is money laundering now this is a financial transaction that aims to hide the identity source and destination of illegally obtained money so money laundering is the process by which we hide the identity or the source of where the money is coming from this money is usually illegally obtained for example through drug smuggling uh, robbery etc right so this money is made to go through certain processes that this illegally obtained money is finally pumped into the legal economy of the country an example is of course the hawala uh, scam as far as india is concerned 
India has a specific money laundering law that is the Prevention of Money Laundering Act of 2002. So this is also important for your paper. Next is a term related to banking sector that you keep on reading in the newspapers that is the non-performing assets or NPA. Now this is a type of classification of asset by financial institutions like banks and other financial institutions that refers to loans that are in danger of default. So this is a stage which is just before default, uh, defaulting of the loan. So any asset is categorized as a non-performing asset if the borrower fails to pay the principal or the interest rate interest payment for a period greater than 90 days right so as far as indian uh, public sector banks are concerned that is psbs they have very high levels of non performing assets to the tune of 2.16 lakh, lakh crores in order to combat this the government of india set up a committee under a former chairperson of the axis bank that is pj nayak committee this was formed to reform the corporate governance structure of public sector banks in India to bring down the levels of NPAs in the country. So let us talk about the various recommendations made by PJNI committee on uh, banking corporate governance. So NI committee understood that because the government of India is the majority stakeholder of public sector banks in India it is leading to a lot of political interference. So it recommended that the government should transfer its shares to another company that is the bank investment company with functional autonomy. Right. So the entire shares of the government of India should be transferred to this new company that is bank investment company. Also the committee recommended that the government has to repeal these laws Bank Nationalization Act of 1970 SBI Act, SBI Subsidiaries Act, etc. However, the PGNI committee realized that in order for the government to transfer all its stake to the BIC, it would take a lot of time. So in the temporary phase, the NI committee recommends that until BIC is born, government should set up a bank boards bureau at Mumbai to advise on all board appointments, bank chairmen, CMD, executive directors etc so the pgni committee what it is necessarily saying is that we need to appoint a independent body like the bank boards bureau which will recommend the names of higher level management people of various public sector banks so that political interference is minimized in banking operations another important committee is the gopal krishna committee on capacity building of public sector banks. So it gave the following recommendations. First related recruitment that there should be a common bank aptitude test for different public sector banks which is in fact uh, happening today as well. Next with related to uh, training each bank should have a chief learning officer who would be in charge of ensuring the best skills are imparted to the bank officers and banks should send staff to deputation in institutes or even abroad to enhance their skills. Lastly, with respect to bank transfers, the committee recommended that bank transfer policy needs to be revamped and needs to be more suited, suited to the interest of the bank employees. Next is a very important term which has been in the news in the recent past related to defaults made by uh, Dr. Vijay Malia from Kingfisher Airlines. So a bank can categorize any borrower as a willful defaulter if the entity has defaulted in meeting its payment or repayment obligations firstly even when it has the capacity to do so. Second, it has not utilized the finance from the lender for the specific purpose for which the loan was availed and has diverted funds. So when an entity does not spend the loan money on the purpose for which it was taken and diverts it to some other use. Secondly, it has disposed of the assets given by him or it for the purpose of securing a term loan without the knowledge of the bank or the lender. So let us say if I take a loan and I give my house as a security or collateral for the loan and if I sell 
my house without informing the bank, then again I can be uh, classified as a willful defaulter. If somebody is classified as a willful defaulter, an individual or even a company, then he or she finds it very difficult to get more loans from the market. So during the course of this video lecture, I gave you a brief idea of certain important terms related to the banking sector in India and in general. Uh, that is all for today. Thank you very much.